and so there you go. Amen. Romans chapter 6. Let's all stand and open our Bibles this morning. Glad you're in church. Amen. Amen. Glad to be in the house of God. Amen. I love church, like Brother Houston said. Most of my major decisions up till this point in my life at 24 years old have been made in a local, independent, fundamental Baptist church. And I believe the rest of my life, that is where my major decisions will be made. Amen. Can't go wrong. Amen. Making decisions like that and making decisions in church. Amen. Romans chapter 6, verse number 13. We're going to read this. I'll read it for you. The Bible says, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Amen. What a, a great verse. I'd like to preach to you on the subject this morning, a yielded, yielding life. A yielded, yielding life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we sure do love you. Thank you for the wonderful day that you've given to us. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity I get to be here and preach and stand behind a pulpit, Lord, and proclaim the word of God. Lord, I know how I don't deserve that. Lord, I Lord, can't thank you enough for giving me the Lord, the opportunity, and Lord, as, uh, as the Bible says, you counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, Lord, and I get a chance to serve God's people. Lord, and I, I do appreciate that, and thank you, Lord, for that. Ask Holy Spirit of God that you would speak through me and use me today. Lord, your people have gathered not to hear from me. Lord, once again, they've gathered to hear from an almighty God. Lord, you have the answers. Lord, you have the, uh, Lord, you have the, the, the answer to the questions that we have this morning. Lord, you, you have the answers to the prayers that, Lord, are prayed. And Lord, we can get a hold of you. And, Lord, if you don't meet with us, then, Lord, what will we do? And, Lord, we've got to have you this morning. Holy Spirit, I need you to use me today just to be a blessing, to add another brick into the wall of faith. Lord, we love you. We thank you. God, I ask that you'd please meet with us this morning in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. We're going to keep going down here. Romans chapter 6. I'm going to go to verse number 16. The Bible says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Now, I was home taught, and, uh, but I do remember in my English class, in my home taught school, when my mom uh, was helping teach me that the question mark means there's a question. Amen. And at the end of verse 16, you look there, there's a question mark. So God is asking us a question. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. God asks a question to us this morning. Don't you know that who you yield yourself to this morning, you'll obey? You'll be a servant to who you yield yourself to. Yield, that word yield, means to surrender, to give in. It can also mean to produce. For instance, I yield myself to God, that's a surrender, but the ground yields fruit. So yielding can mean to surrender, but it, could also, it also can mean to produce. It's a verb. It's an action. It's funny because the two definitions work hand in hand. That's where I get my title from this morning. You can't yield fruit to God without yielding your life to God. Amen. You as a Christian will never yield fruit until you yield to God. You'll never produce as a Christian until you surrender to an almighty God. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants. I like how the Bible puts that there, servants. Everybody serves somebody or something. Doesn't matter who you are, where you live, how much money you have. You're a servant to something or somebody. Whether a servant to God or maybe a servant to the devil. Maybe a servant to money. Maybe a servant to your car. I don't know who you've yielded your life to, your, your possessions to, but whoever you've yielded yourself to, you've become their servant. God wants us to be His servants this morning. Amen. God wants you this morning to yield fruit to Him. 
But that means you're going to have to make a decision for God. It's kind of like that yield sign. You know, I, I don't know if any of you obey the yield sign. Ah, I try. My wife does. I try. I stress that because I hate yield signs. Man, I hate yielding. I don't know if it's a man thing, but I'm an independent fundamental Baptist. We don't yield to nothing, okay? And uh, we're our own men. And uh, so I come up to that yield sign, look at that with hate and envy. Oh, make me yield, you know? And uh, you got to see a car coming around, and like, I got to give in to that. I got to give in. I got a V8 Dodge Ram pickup. I got to give in to a little Chevy Spark. It's like I could hit that thing and it turn into like a little ball of flour. You know, just gone. You wouldn't ever see it again, amen? I'm like, my Dodge Ram b 8 has got to yield to that. You know, I got stinking horsepower. That runs on electricity. <laughs> you know, plug that. I got more electricity, electricity in my battery than that thing's got running through the whole thing. You know, and I'm like, come on. You got to yield to that thing. And you know, that's because as a man, I'm proud. It takes humility for me to yield, amen? Women are better at that. Amen. They yield better than men do. Just a fact I've learned in marriage. And uh, sometimes, uh, more often, I'm more stubborn than she is, but she is pretty stubborn as well. But she's always stubborn because she's right. I don't know why that is. I don't know if anybody else has figured that out, but she's always right. So that's what I've just learned in my year of marriage. Women are always right. Amen. That's a whole other sermon. And uh, <laughs> no. But we have to yield because yielding takes humility. Amen. If you're going to yield to God, you're going to have to humble yourself this morning. Amen. If you're going to yield to the Lord and allow yourself to produce fruit to God, you're going to have to humble yourself and realize you're, bigger, you're not as big as you think you are. Amen. My V8 Dodge Ram is as big as I think it is. However, it's not what I think it is. Amen. Sometimes we uh, tend to think of ourselves bigger than who we really are. We tend to think we're bigger than God. We know better than God. How dare God ask us to give our time to Him? How dare God ask me to give Him my life? It takes humility. You have to come to realize who God is and who you are. How many of you are sinners in this room today? Amen. You're a sinner. Have you done wrong? You've sinned? Yeah. Yeah. Some hands were raised. Some weren't. And I uh, hope you realize what sin is this morning. When you've sinned, that means you've done wrong. Amen. You've disappointed God. You've done up opposite of what God has told you to do. You've lied. You've stole. You've, you, whatever it may be. Whatever sin, you've done opposite of God, and that makes you a sinner. God's perfect, holy, just, never failed. Amen. And also, God loves us, and God gave His Son. Amen. The Holy Spirit today, I believe, is putting out a call to every person in America, every Christian and every lost person to yield to Him. I believe if you could look up into heaven, God's holding up a yield sign, asking everybody to yield to Him. Give Him the right of way. Give Him the opportunity to use you. I believe America can still have revival, but God can't work until we as His children are yielded to Him. I believe today there are a couple areas that the Holy Spirit is dealing with in Christians and in lost people to yield to, to yield to Him. Amen. Let's start. Number one, I believe the Holy Spirit is trying to get us to yield to Him in salvation. Verse number 21, the Bible says, What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. What we used to be, what sin brings, the wages of sin is death. We need to come to realization that every person today, the Holy Spirit, the first thing He wants you to yield to Him is for salvation. Amen. Can I put out a statement to you? You're not saved by your works. Amen. You're not saved by joining this independent Baptist church. You're not saved by coming and, and serving here or getting baptized. You're not saved by what you've done or your track record or maybe what you haven't done. God says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death. And then he says that who, if you transgress in even one point of the law, that you've, you've broken all of them. Amen. It doesn't matter. You may not have been as bad as some, but the fact that you've sinned means you're worthy of death. It's like a dartboard. 
Any of you ever played darts? Drives me crazy because I usually hit, I get like right there by that bullseye, you know, how you do, and you just, you, you're just right there, and you're, I don't know how, you know, you just, you're like, what, what more do I do? And then you throw that dart real hard, and then tip breaks, and then you scream, and you walk away, and your wife looks at you go, look, just because I won doesn't mean you got to get mad. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> now we were playing darts, you know, and, you know, and sin is like that. You know, a lot of people think, well, I'm not like that guy. I didn't miss the mark that far. But the mark, the bullseye, God says, it doesn't matter whether you miss it by a little bit or you miss it by a whole lot. doesn't matter. Maybe you're not as big of a sinner as others are or maybe you just sin a little bit. It doesn't matter. God says you've still missed the mark. Amen. If you've missed that mark today, whether by a little lie, whether by a little sin, or maybe you've missed it by a whole lot. You've missed the mark and you're worthy of death. The only hope you have is in Jesus Christ and an old rugged cross. The good thing is, whether you've missed the mark by a little bit or by a lot, He can forgive you for either. Amen. Because God sees sin the same and God can forgive all the sin. Amen. You're not so far from God that God can't save you. Amen. You've not, done, you've not done enough wrong that God can't forgive. Amen. God can forgive anything. Amen. But the Holy Spirit cries today because there's confusion in America. There's many voices that are putting out and saying that salvation is through another way or that you can go through Mary or you can go through a church or you can go through water or you can go through your work. Or you have to speak in tongues. But God still puts out a cry and says through the Holy Spirit of God, it's through Jesus today. I beg you to trust Christ if you haven't done that. The Holy Spirit may be dealing with you on your heart as He did with me as a young boy when I realized I didn't have Jesus. The only hope that we have. He's the only way. Amen. He died on an old rugged cross, gave every drop of blood He had in His body to pay for sin. And the Holy Spirit just simply asks you to yield to Him. Yield to the Lord Jesus and let Him save you. Yield to Him. Quit trusting yourself. I went out soul winning Saturday after I, right after I got off work because I, I hate my schedule right now. Every third Saturday they asked me to work and I love going soul winning so I had to work this last Saturday in the morning and I got off of work, met my wife. We went soul winning, knocked on a door and a guy came and I asked him if he knew if he died he'd go to heaven. He said, well, I don't really know. He said, but I was taught that if you do pretty good, you can... Slip right in. I tried, to give him, I tried to give him the gospel and explain how that Jesus already paid for sin. Jesus already gave his life. Why are you trying to earn something he's already bought? Why are you trying to achieve something he's already achieved? He didn't quite understand, didn't quite agree, but we walked away friends. But my prayer is that he came to church this morning. I invited him. His wife goes to church, but he doesn't. But his wife doesn't go to a, a good church. Amen. It's not really a church, amen. It's just a place that meets and they get up and sing songs and say praise the Lord and, and something like that. And then they walk out. They don't, no preaching, no preaching of the gospel. They don't believe in Jesus and nothing like that. So I, told, I didn't tell him that. But if you don't go to a church that believes the word of God, that believes Jesus died on an old rugged cross, you're not going to a church, amen. amen. Just thought I'd throw that out there. I mean, it's like that rock. You, know, you throw it in there, pack of dogs, if everyone yelps, you hit one. There you go. So <laughs> praise the Lord. But the Holy Spirit wants you to yield today. Are you saved? Are you born again? It's the first step. You'll never yield fruit past salvation. You'll never do anything for God past salvation. That's why you see some, there are some pastors, there are some people, they serve God for years and years and years, and then all of a sudden they hit at an altar and get saved. Why is that? Because you can't serve God and have the peace of God on the inside without Jesus Christ. Amen. It never works that way. You can't go backwards. Amen. You've got to start with Christ. Amen. Funny how Romans chapter 6 then, for the, uh, Romans uh, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Doesn't get any simpler than that. Through Jesus. Amen. Yield to Him today for salvation. Number two, maybe you're saved this morning, but look at verse 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Maybe you need to yield today to the Holy Spirit for service. You know, it's like this piano. This is an instrument. It 
has a purpose. It's to be used for a specific purpose. When God made you, God made you an instrument. God made you to do something. Amen? Your life's not pointless. Sometimes teenagers, when we deal with them, uh, they get in their uh, stages where they think, well, uh, my life means nothing. You know, I, I, I'm never, you know, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I say, just, just, get, just go to church, serve God, you'll be fine. Amen? Especially the girls. Girls get in these stages, you know, where they just get, you know, emotional or whatever, you know. They, you know, they, you know who knows what happened. Uh, their hair didn't fix right that morning or something, you know. Or, you know, when they put it in a ponytail, it didn't sit over to this side of the head far enough. You know, who knows, amen. They come to church, my life is, it's over. I just tell them, go to church, serve God, amen. Men come to hair, hair's all over the place. You know, we don't care, amen. We, you know, just serve God, amen. But God, you're an instrument today. But this instrument right here can be used for unrighteousness just as much as it can be used for righteousness. You can be used for wrong just as much as you can be used for right. You're an instrument that will be played. So who's playing your tune? Maybe you say, well, I don't like the tune my life is going. Well, then you need a different master. You need somebody to play a different tune for you. Amen. That means you need to find a different pianist. <laughs> you need to find somebody to play a different tune for you. A lot of people say, well, I don't like the way my life is going. Were you in church last Sunday? I don't like the way my life's been going. Did you tithe? See, whoever you yield yourself to play your instrument, is the tune they'll play. You let the devil play your instrument, he'll play his tune. And that's why your life is filled with, dis with distress, with deceit, with destruction. But you let God play, and you let God use you as his instrument, and he'll bring life and fruit and happiness. You may be a Christian today, but you can still be used for the devil's purpose. Because you've got to yield to God. God needs a vessel that is willing to be used. Someone to sell out and give God everything they've got. Whether it be a pastor. Whether it be an evangelist. Whether it be the janitor. Whether it just be the layman. It doesn't matter who it is. The Holy Spirit puts out a call to everybody. Every teenager. Every child. Every adult. Every mom. Every dad. To yield. And allow Him to do His work. Why don't you yield to God? Why won't you let God use you today? Why don't you just give in? Just let God do something. I know why. A lot of Americans won't yield because it'll interrupt their life. God will interrupt your schedule. He'll have to interrupt your football game on Sunday. Oh, my. He'll have to interrupt your sports program for your children at the public school. I have some teenagers right now that had to make a decision. Are they going to do sports or go to church? Funny how that the sports program plays on Sunday. Isn't that just funny how that happens? I don't know why. And you'd think that maybe the devil had a hold of that somehow. But they always make the teenagers play when they should be in church. And then they got to practice on Saturday when they should be out soul winning. Drive me nuts. I had a dad come to me. He, he said, well, sorry, my, my teenage daughter's not going to be there. She's got to practice on Saturday. And I said, you mean she's going to skip the bus route and go soul winning so she can practice a basketball game? It's been three weeks in a row now. He said it was only going to be that one week. Come on now. Who are you going to yield to today? It'll interrupt your goals to make money. There are lots of men out there that have forsaken the house of God because of work called them. Said if you'll work full time on Sunday, we'll raise your pay. If you'll work full time for us, of course, Chick fil A, I mean, you never have to worry about that. So there you go, brother. Amen. We all go work for Chick fil A today. Hey? That's why they're successful, by the way. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Don't make you work on Sunday. God wants you to yield to Him. 
If you say, well, I, I, I don't think I can because I've got too much going on. I don't want to yield to God because I'll have to give up my lifestyle that I have now. And if you say that, then let me ask you a question. Can God ask too much? Can God ever ask too much from you as a saved, born-again child of God? If you say yes, then let me take you back 2,000 years to an old rugged cross where a Savior hung in agony and shame and gave every drop of blood he had in his body and had crowns of thorns put on his head. And I want you to look upon the Savior upon an old rugged cross that forsook heaven, gave everything he had. And you listen to me today. A Savior hung with nails in his hands and his feet and you look at me and say, God can ask too much from you. How dare you? How dare you tell me God can ask too much? When God gave everything. Jesus loved you so much, He gave His life. The Bible says He came to seek and to save that which was lost. That would be everybody here this morning. That was His purpose in coming. Can God ever ask too much of you? Can God ever ask you to give up too much of this old wicked world? Can God ever ask too much of you to dress modestly? Can God ever ask too much of you to serve and go sowing and tell people the gospel and bear the name of Christ, sometimes in reproach? But I dare say God can never ask too much because one day when you stand before Him and He shows you the nail prints, I promise you, you'll look at him and say, I wish I'd have given him more. Yield to the Holy Spirit today. Holy Spirit, maybe you need to be in church more. Maybe you need to read your Bible more. Maybe you need to start tithing. Maybe you need to start doing more for God. Maybe you need to clean up the way you act. Clean up the life. Clean up the dress. I don't know what it is. The Holy Spirit does. But whatever he puts on your heart to do more, would you yield to him today? Number three, I've touched on it a little bit, but yield to the Holy Spirit for sanctification. The Holy Spirit today wants to draw us closer to God and farther from sin. The closer you are to God, the farther you will be from sin. But you've got to yield to God. The Holy Spirit wants you to yield to Him because He wants to take you farther from the devil and the devil's crowd. Do you have a problem this morning with sin? Then yield to God. You have a, maybe an issue this morning that you've been dealing with the Lord about. Well, we just need to yield to God. Let God have His perfect work. Maybe the Holy Spirit has been dealing with you, and you know it. Maybe the Holy Spirit through the church, and maybe that's why you've not been in church. Because every time you come, the Holy Spirit reminds you, you need to get that right. Would you yield to Him today? Sanctification is merely like what Brother Houston pointed out. It's the perfecting of the saints. It's continually, continually to make us better and make us uh, better servants for the Master. The Bible says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. That's what sanctification is. It's a draw to holiness. Look at verse 22. If you don't believe me, then here you go. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness. That's what God wants. God wants us to be holy like He is holy. Amen. And the last thing. Maybe you're the type of Christian where you've yielded for salvation. You're saved, born again. You're trying to serve God the best that you know how. You've tried to separate and become as, and do more for God and, and sanctification is never a process you ever achieve till you get to heaven. I mean, it's a continual, continual process. But maybe you're trying the best that you know how then this last point is for you. We need to yield to the Holy Spirit for fruit. Because the only fruit that you can ever bear is through the Holy Spirit of God. You can't be stubborn with the Holy Spirit and expect to yield fruit unto God. Verse 22 talked about it. We touch it again. God wants us to have fruit unto holiness. 
But look how it says, being now made free from sin and become servants to God. Being made free from sin, that means you're saved. And then you're a servant to God. You've yielded yourself for the master's service, whatever it may be. And now you've got to yield yourself to the Holy Spirit to let Him bring fruit. Because you can serve God and serve God and serve God and serve God, but if you don't get a hold of the Holy Spirit and you don't pray and ask God to help you, the service is in vain. If we as Christians don't get on our knees and pray and beg God, then everything we do when we meet on Sunday morning, it's not going to be what it could be. The Holy Spirit won't be able to move like He could, but to a Christian that gets on his knees and begs God and yields himself to be used for the master's service, whatever it may be, through, the pray through prayer and through reading God's Word, they see God move in a special way. How can God move in Wichita, Kansas? i tell you how. It's when Christians yield to the Holy Spirit of God. And let him bring forth fruit. I like what it says though. You have your fruit unto holiness. Fruit, when you, uh, fruit is a continual process. You never bear fruit once and then that's it. You never see a tree or a plant or whatever. You never see bear fruit and then that's it. They die and wither away. No, they bear more fruit. And more fruit. And more fruit. You know what God wants from us today? He wants us to bear more fruit. Amen. Maybe you've bared some fruit for the Lord. Well, God wants more. Amen. God wants you to do more. God wants you to bear more. God wants you to keep going. God wants you to yield to the Holy Spirit because there's more people that need saved. Amen. God wants you to yield because more lives need to be changed. There are more teenagers that need to be reached that are on the streets walking on drugs and alcohol and cigarettes and there's a way out, but they need somebody who's yielded to come by and tell them there's a lost or there's a way out of the lost and dying world. There's a way to escape hell. There's a better life serving God. Amen. There are more people out there that are looking for a hope, that are looking for somebody to come by and give them hope for their life. They think life is nothing but a game or maybe they think life has no meaning but there's meaning to their life but they just don't know because how shall they hear without a preacher? Everybody in this room can do that. You can be a preacher. You can preach the gospel. Give them that hope. Bring them to church. Help them to, uh, help them to yield to the Holy Spirit. But you've got to be yielded yourself. Hear ye the master's call, amen, as the song goes, and give him your all. Does God deserve your best? Give him the rest. Without the Holy Spirit working through us, all our labor will be for naught. Are you yielded this morning? Maybe the Holy Spirit touched your heart, and maybe you've not accepted Christ as your Savior. Maybe you've, not, maybe you've been trusting in something else. Yield to God today. Yield to the Lord Jesus. Can I testify to you as a saved sinner that it's worth it to let Jesus take you and, and, and forgive your sin? Amen. I know that in my life I grew up in church uh, and, and you know, for a long time as a pastor's kid, you know, dealing with salvation, and, you know, I didn't have the experience other people had. You know, I didn't come from a lot. I mean, I gave up the bottle when I was about five, but. <laughs> and then I grew up on drugs. I was drugged to church, drugged to prayer meeting, drugged to everything, you know. I didn't have the life that some had. And then there was a, a song that was sung when I was at Bible college. It really touched my heart. It said that uh, I, didn't, I didn't live that, I, God didn't save me. Uh, God saved me, not from that life, but saved me from living that kind of a life. Amen. And that's what I'm thankful for. That God knows what I would be without Jesus. Amen. And I don't have to live with regret. Amen. Maybe you live with regret. Well, Jesus can forgive it. Amen. Jesus can help you with it. I ask you to yield. Imagine in your mind today, draw a picture. The Holy Spirit walking to and fro through every pew, talking to every heart with a yield sign, asking you, 
to yield? Would you just give in? Maybe you don't completely understand. Maybe it doesn't make sense. But that's a good thing. You just yield and watch God do the rest. I like verse 17, and then we'll close. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. At the end of the day, let God be thanked. Because God can do something great. And when you yield to God, and you let Him take care of your sin, and you serve an almighty God at the end of your life, you, like Paul will say, thank God I did it. When you're standing at heaven looking at Jesus one day, you'll say, thank God that I yielded. Can you thank the Lord today? If not, then start by yielding to Him. And you'll turn around one day, 20 years from now, and you'll say, thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Amen. We're all a testimony of God's saving power. If you're saved, born again, God didn't have to do that, but He did. If you're not, God can. There's plenty of testimonies and eyewitnesses of God's power in here. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we sure do love you. Lord, thank you for the message.